you directed the movie, so what was it about the script and the um, storyline overall that really convinced you to um, take on the director, the, the direct directorial duties for the film? All right. Well, basically, when I read the script, I I I I, I felt very um, inspired by the story about um, people trying to reach, uh, you know, a, a, a huge you know, a huge goal, you know, uh, trying to, to, uh, to go uh, somewhere where, where, you know, where no one has gone before. You know, there's something about uh, the human nature and uh, exploration, which, uh, which I find fascinating. And the mixture of that with the uh, sacrifices that, uh, that, uh, that exploration entails, um, I found fascinating. I found uh, that it was a really extreme uh, story about uh, about what you would be willing to give up, you know, to, to, to reach your goals. And, um, and uh, at the same time, I thought uh, it was, uh, you know, a very gripping story while also keeping a foot on, on realism and on science, you know, on real science. And I thought there was a really nice equilibrium between between the two elements, um, and it was a great challenge. You know, it was something that I, I had never done a science fiction film before. I used to be as a teenager uh, a very big uh, fan of, of of reading a lot of science fiction. You know, I read a lot of great sci-fi authors, whether it was or, uh, Arthur C. Clarke or Isaac Asimov or Ray Bradbury, Philip K. Dick, all you know, all the greats. Uh, all the great masters in science, in science fiction literature, I um, I thought this was a unique opportunity to, to actually tackle the genre that I didn't think I, I would normally have uh, a, a chance to, to tackle and, uh, and with a great script and a, a great concept. And since, since this was the first sci-fi movie that you did direct, what kind of research did you do before you actually began filming? Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit. That was one of one of the biggest things because it was the first time for me. I felt that my way to protect myself, you know, and to to make sure that it, that I didn't uh, uh, betray the story or the genre was to do as much as investigation as possible. So, on on one hand, um, you know, did a lot of reading, a lot of research, watched a lot of documentaries on space. There was one documentary called For All Mankind, about the Apollo missions, which I found to be a great source of, of inspiration, both for me and, and everyone in the crew and, and the cast. You know, that was the one piece that I would have them watch a lot. Uh, did a lot of reading. There was a, a book in particular called uh, Packing for Mars uh, by Mary Roach, which I thought uh, was also great in terms of describing both the logistical as well as psychological implications of, of space travel. But more, perhaps more important than, than all the research I did uh, on my own was the access uh, we had to a lot of uh, great scientists uh, involved directly in both space travel and, and research of, of, uh, of uh, Euro Euro Europa. Uh, we had uh, access to, you know, two of our science uh, consultants on the film were uh, scientists uh, who work at JPL. Uh, Kevin Hand and uh, Steve Vance, and uh, they were extremely helpful and uh, uh, provided us with a lot of great information. We visited JPL, visited SpaceX, uh, talked to uh, uh, spaceship designers, talked to a lot of a lot of amazing people who who were, you know, uh, to my surprise, you know, more than willing to open their world uh, to us because they. They really wanted science to be portrayed uh, accurately in the movie. And since this was the first sci-fi movie um, that you directed, um, are there any particular filmmakers in the genre that maybe inspired you um, as you were filming? Well, the big, uh, I mean, there's always, you know, you always have the, the masterpieces behind you who are, you know, who are the big inspirations, such as, you know, 2001, you know, the, uh, Stanley Kubrick, who, you know, up to, up to this day still, you know, is, is, is still probably the, you know, the, 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 the biggest, you know, the biggest uh, in, inspiration I've, I've, I've had. Um, I, I love uh, the, the film Moon, you know, by Duncan Jones, uh, and I love Solaris, uh, 
Tarkovsky uh, film. Um, but I think the biggest inspiration is actually uh, came from a documentary, was the, 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 the For All Mankind documentary, which uh, which uh, I think really does an amazing job in uh, in in um, telling the story of uh, what what it means to to reach for something that that, that seems to be beyond our grasp, you know, to reach for something uh, as as impossible as going to to the moon, and uh, it deals it, 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 it tells that story from a very human perspective, you know, from the perspective of the astronauts who were there, and, and I think that was that's a really beautiful piece of filmmaking. There's another film, uh, another documentary which I found to to to, to to be a big inspiration, which is called Out of the Present. It's a Romanian a Romanian uh, documentary, and uh, and also I, you know, I watched uh, endless hours of uh, of uh, NASA footage, you know, from the the NASA channel, the NASA YouTube channel, uh, footage from the International Space Station, footage from the different missions. Uh, I thought I thought uh, there was a lot to to, to draw from there. Uh, and since the film itself, you know, Europa Report uh, is a full documentary, you know, it, it, it has, it takes the conceit of, uh, you know, of a, of a, of a, um, of a full documentary that, that uses a lot of, uh, you know, that, 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 that is made up on mostly of, of found footage uh, that was uh, taped during, uh, during the mission from the monitoring cameras inside the spaceship. Uh, it felt only right to 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 use to draw more inspiration from from documentaries actually than from fiction films. And um, Philip Collette wrote the screenplay for the film. So, what was the process of working with him like as you were shooting? With uh, with whom? I'm sorry. Just um, the, with the screenplay, the screenwriter for the film. What was the process of working with him like overall? Well, I think it was it was great. Philip Philip Gillette, I think is the uh, uh, great, great, and very talented writer, and uh, he, 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 he didn't have any problems of doing as much uh, research as necessary. Uh, in uh, try also, in didn't have um, you know an issue in going back to every scene as you know as, as we were doing more investigation and we wanted we wanted things to to be as real as possible. You know, we revisited a lot of the scenes over and over again, and uh, and and he also, I think, did a, a, a fantastic job of mixing all the science and all the investigation with a story that is still thrilling, you know, and that you can still connect to easily. You know, I I, I, I found uh, I found it a great experience to work with him. And the movie is the first one that you directed that you also didn't write the screenplay for. So what was that um, process like of directing a movie um, that someone else is, that someone else wrote and adapting their screenplay overall? Well, it's interesting because it's 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 a slightly different process because you 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 know you 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 don't you know you don't start uh, by generating something yourself. You you basically. Uh, in a way appropriate, you know, something that, that was already there. And, uh, and and you have to make it your own. You have to find the, the elements that will really, um, you know, that, that, that will really uh, allow you to, to, to become very close to, to the material. Uh, and in this case specifically, I think there was an added layer, you know, another uh, an added layer of, 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 of challenge, which is the fact that... Um, because this is a, a, a full documentary, you're telling the story from the perspective of uh, basically the company, the Europa Corporation, the, 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 the company behind the, this uh, space mission, and uh, they've put together, you know, from the material that that was uh, that was uh, shot inside the ship, they've put together their version of the story, and that means that uh, that that you have almost like a, a perspective and a narrator throughout the, the film that, uh, that you have to um, uh, embrace in a way where it's, it's, uh, the style of the film is not your own style as a filmmaker, but the style of, 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 of whoever fictionally put together this, this story, you know what I mean? It's, 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 uh, it's um, uh, the decision 
decisions that are made, you know, if, if the story is told from a more heroic perspective, or if, uh, you know, there's music used to enhance certain moments, it's because whoever was putting this together would have used it for that purpose. And, and I think that's a really, a really huge challenge, a really interesting process as well, you know, to, to, to be able to play with that as well. As well. And what was the casting process like for the lead characters in the film? How did you go about casting the um, lead characters in the film? Well, uh, because the, the, um, the crew of astronauts inside the ship had, uh, you know, what was an international crew, uh, well, that, that, that opened up a lot of possibilities in terms of who we could we could cast. We 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 knew we wanted great actors. They didn't have to be huge stars, but they had to be great actors from, from different parts of the world. Uh, and we had an amazing, well, you know, I was lucky to work with an amazing casting director with uh, A.V. Kaufman, who uh, was very helpful in putting together this great ensemble cast. She, she suggested a lot of great people. I suggested a lot of people myself. Um, the first the first one who came on board was actually uh, Michael Nightfist, uh, who was, you know, a great Swedish Swedish actor, and uh, and uh, he he was really passionate about the script, about his character, about what we could do with it, and uh, in in um, you know the moment that he came on board, that was uh, that that, that his, his uh, participation in the film worked a little bit also, I think, as a magnet for for other great actors. You know, uh, Charles de Gaulle, who plays James, you know, a South African actor. Yeah, he, uh, he, he loved the script, but he, he was also fascinated with the opportunity of working with, with Nightfist as well. Um, I, I, uh, I suggested from the very beginning uh, Anna Maria Marinka, who is the, the actress from Four Months, Three Weeks Today, the Romanian actress who plays uh, Rosa, and, uh, because I, 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 I've, I've been a huge fan of her, her work, and it seemed like a great opportunity to be able to, to, to work with her. Uh, she did a, a reading for for Rosa, and uh, we, we we were all convinced from you know from that moment on that that she would be ideal for the part, and uh, and uh, it was great also to cast her in something very different from what she's done before. You know, suddenly the fact that she was doing science fiction here, it it it, um, it you know it's very unusual for her, and I think she she does an amazing amazing role. But, uh, but it was basically, and then Daniel Wu from China was also, you know, a, gr a great, great, to, I, I, I didn't know his work before, you know, he was brought to my attention by, you know, through, through AV, through the casting director, and, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, a huge, huge star in China, and this was actually his first um, English language film, uh, and, 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 and it was great to, 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 be, to be able to work with people who, you would normally not be able to put together in a film, you know, the the, 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 the type of cast of international crew in the film, uh, in, in, in the, the international crew of astronauts allowed us to do so, and that, that, was, that was very nice. And did you have a rehearsal period with the actors before you actually began shooting the movie um, to really help them build their characters and their relationships um, together? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We had, we had uh, about two weeks before, uh, for, 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 for two reasons, you know, to be able, you know, because it's, it's an ensemble piece, you know, like you said, it was very important for them to, to really know who they were and to, and, to, and to have a clear understanding of what their dynamic as a group and amongst each other would be. But also, there was a lot of technical stuff in the film, you know, there was a lot of things that they, they needed to familiarize themselves, they needed to really understand. You know, is the the the, the, um, the language, whether it's scientific or, or 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 technical things that that they need to deal with. Also, we had a very unusual unusual shoot where the set was a set that was constructed to work in 360 degrees, and we had uh, you know eight cameras uh, set up inside the set that were shooting simultaneously, and so it was a very immersive set. You know, when they were in there. Uh, I was outside of the, I was directing them through a microphone, and uh, and and they would they would they would be you know completely uh, immersed in inside the spaceship. Um, but they knew they needed to also be 
became very familiar with 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 all the equipment inside the spaceship and what what they were ac actually doing in there, so that it wouldn't look like they're just pushing pushing buttons randomly. You know, they they had very specific tasks and very specific purposes. So we rehearsed inside the spaceship as well. Uh, they we I got them together with a lot of uh, with real astronauts with uh, with real scientists who were very helpful and also getting them to understand the passion behind their characters and, uh, and having those two weeks before was was really useful and the movie was shot in the fan footage and documentary style of filmmaking so what was um the process of really shooting the movie in that genre and how did you really work to make it unique from other um other films that are like also in that fan footage genre well i think to begin with because we're dealing with the uh, with the uh, 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 space age uh, found footage film, you know, you have uh, uh, the aesthetic of it was quite different from the usual found footage uh, horror film, for instance, where you have a very degraded uh, home video camera that's shaking a lot and that's moving around a lot. Here we were talking about fixed monitoring cameras that would have a very high tech aesthetic, but that were also, uh, that had to be very functional. And uh, we always approached the the the, the, um, the aesthetic of a film of the film from a functional perspective, you know. And, and we had it, that, that, that that meant uh, not having the usual tools that you would have in a regular film, but having other tools that were perhaps just as interesting or 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 more interesting because they were very appropriate to to this to this film, you know. For instance. Um, as the ship uh, gradually dis dis distressed, the cameras and their 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 fun the way they're functioning uh, has you know they they, they they have also problems and issues and, and suddenly you have for instance a camera where the focusing system isn't working well and uh, and, and and you have a great uh, you know great tension in the third act from the fact that you're seeing an image that that's out of focus and it's actually you know a very important you know hero shot of, of, of rosa one of protagonists and um something that in another film would simply be a mistake and here it's actually a source of tension it's something that's completely justified within the story also the found footage element really plays a significant role in the story in terms of what is it that we're watching and the importance of the fact that that, that somehow this footage got back to earth and, uh, and there's some crucial plot points and reveals in the film that dealing with with, uh, with the fact that we are watching this footage and you know the constructing constructing all that was um, uh, you know from from um, the the essence itself of the film and not just because of an aesthetic reason I think uh, made a made a huge difference. And the movie is an independent film, um, and you had a limited budget for it, so did that pose any challenges or difficulties while you were filming, uh, since the story does rely so heavily on um, the visual effects? Oh, absolutely. It was, it, was, it was a very big challenge, you know. It was a, a very short shoot, you know. Uh, it was the shortest shoot I've had on a feature in my life. You know, we, we shot the whole film in 19 days. Uh, and uh, the, the way we were able to achieve that was through this uh, set where we we would shoot all eight cameras, all eight angles simultaneously, so we could move very fast. But uh, but it was still very tricky because there was a lot of physical effects, a lot of visual effects, and um, and we had you know we had very limited resources. At some point, I, I feel that um, we used a lot of the limitations as part of our visual language. You know, we would choose what what we show and what we don't show because you know we have this conceit of. Uh, of, uh, of the monitoring cameras and the fall documentary, but uh, but uh, it, it, it was a big challenge to decide, you know, where to put the resources exactly, what it is, what are our huge moments that we don't want to sacrifice, and then what can we live without. And ultimately, I feel that it all came together very nicely in terms of finding the balance between 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 that, you know, uh, and uh, but. But it was uh, it, it was definitely one of the big difficulties in in, in, in in making the film. And my last question for you is: um, the movie is available on demand and on 
iTunes and it's also having a limited theatrical release. So are you a fan of um, releasing movies like on demand and watching them on demand as well? And do you think that's the feature really of the smaller independent movies like this one? Well, it's funny because for me, it's the first time that I'm doing this, you know, that, I, that I'm going through this process of actually having the film on demand before it hits the theaters. And it's been really fascinating to see it, to see it work uh, play out. You know, the people people are responding really well to the film. Uh, you can reach you know, a, much, um, a much wider audience uh, uh, from the very beginning. And, and, and that's very interesting. It, it does seem like... Like, uh, there is, uh, you know, a, a future, particularly for smaller films like this, if, if, if you don't, you know, if you can't release the film huge with all the promotion that it entails, this is definitely an alternative. And if the film is good uh, and, uh, and people respond to it, uh, I think I think this model, uh, this model definitely works, you know, this model definitely, definitely has, uh, I think, a lot of a lot of good things about it. It's also since it is also the first time that I'm doing, you know, going through this process myself. You know, I, I will tell you, and in, in, in I can tell you in a couple of months how I feel about it after it all happened. But 